All right. We're opening up the room about a minute early, but for those who are coming in, uh, super excited you're here early. If you wouldn't mind going ahead and letting us know where you're calling in from, maybe a little bit about yourself, why this seemed really important to you, because we are about to talk about some pretty cool um, personalities, human characteristics, things that are super important as we start to talk about getting kids ready for life. So thank you for being here. We'll go ahead in a minute and introduce ourselves. All right. Excellent. Well, it is 4.30 in my neck of the woods, 3.30 Pacific Coast, and I am so excited um, to come together again with um, Cassidy, and we'll talk a little bit about what the expectation is. Obviously, you guys all saw it when you got the webinar invite, but I'm Jeanette Simonson with Thrively, and this is obviously a topic very close to my heart as well, having played um, volleyball and team sports uh, made me who I am today, and just so fortunate to have gone down that path. No pun intended, we are here with the uh, founder. Um, so I'm gonna kind of turn it over to Cassidy to lead this off and please in the chat, tell us where you're from and what you're hoping to learn from this so we can make sure we hear all of your voices. Awesome, thank you. Um, super excited to have everyone here today and to, to talk a little bit about our program and, and how you can use it and how you can uh, use it through Thrively because um, that's been super helpful I think for for a lot of people. So I'm just going to, I'm not gonna share it. I'm gonna start my slideshow. Um, so my name is Cassie Lichtman. Uh, I grew up largely in a volleyball gym uh, in Southern California, um, played my whole life starting about the time I could walk. My mom was a volleyball coach. And uh, then when I graduated high school, I went on to Stanford to play there and also got a bachelor's in political science and a master's in history. Um, and then I went to play for the national team for five years, uh, along with um, professional teams overseas during that time. Uh, I went back to Stanford as a coach. Um, so I've had some coaching experience since I um, finished playing. And I've stayed on kind of involved in volleyball on the, on the board of USA Volleyball. Um, and now I'm actually the director of volleyball for Athletes Unlimited, which is the professional league here in the US. Um, it's actually where I am, am right now. I'm in Phoenix. Usually I'm based in Southern California, but Phoenix is the site of our season. So um, if you want to watch some professional volleyball, you can check us out uh, on ESPN in the next month or so. Um, so, you know, PATH, I think, was was born from sports, but it's not really about sports. It's about all of the kind of life skills and human skills and social emotional skills that um, we're always trying to, to teach kids and using the lessons of sports and the lens of it to, to help students learn some of those skills um, in a way that's a little bit different than how we might normally teach it in a classroom um, and with a little bit more intention maybe than we teach it in the sports setting even normally. So um, this is our mission, you know, we'll go over the mechanics of how it works, but this is really the, the basis of it that we're really trying to teach these skills around, we kind of bucket them into empathy, equity and empowerment. Um, and so, like I said, that, you know, even within the sports context where we say that we teach all these life skills, there's not always a lot of intention around it. And so when we think about how often we're actually speaking to um, these things, as opposed to hitting a ball or doing a math equation, um, you know, we're not always teaching them in explicit ways. And so we wanted to do that, but also to make it as easy as possible um, to incorporate that and, and to hit on these kind of social emotional skills, because we know that you know, you don't have a lot of time and not everybody's trained um, in this particular area. So uh, the goal is to make this easy and engaging. So when I you know, started PATH, one of the ideas was to be able to use um, these kind of really powerful, influential people to, to speak to the kids themselves. And so these are all, um, and we have some more, these are just some examples, but professional, collegiate or Olympic, 
um, athletes and coaches who have had, you know, incredible success, obviously in their careers. And, you know, what I found through, you know, my career as an athlete is that, you know, when I walk into a gym and you sort of drop the, the brand names of Stanford volleyball or USA volleyball, um, or if I tell them, you know, this person went and played in the NFL, kids just listen a little bit differently than they listen to, you know, their teacher or, or mom and dad, um, just because that's what we're all kind of culturally uh, used to used to doing is to seeing these people on screen and, and um, seeing them as kind of influencers. And so we want to really use those voices, um, you know, to not only, you know, see them on screen and winning games, but to speak to how they do that and what those lessons are that transfer from, you know, winning on a field or a court into, you know, their day-to-day -day lives. Uh, and we try to get, you know, a really diverse set. And so across, you know, race, gender, ability, we have Paralympians um, because every kid's going to resonate with a different story. And so, you know, I can't speak to what it feels like to, to grow up black and Korean in a single mother household, um, but Heinz Ward can. Uh, and he also happens to be, you know, a Super Bowl champion. And so there's a kid that's going to resonate really deeply with that message and potentially a different kid who's going to resonate with, you know, Kelsey Plum, who's a female basketball player, et cetera. So try to get kind of a diverse group um, to help meet kids where they are. So what makes this program effective? Um, we know, you know, how people learn. And so they tend to learn in short, frequent bursts. So what we do is we create content, we create videos that are three to four minutes long or shorter um, because you all deal with kids, you know, their attention spans these days. Um, even three minutes might be a little bit long, but we try to make it nice and short, partly for that attention span and partly because we know that you don't have a lot of time as an educator, advisor, a coach. Um, you don't have hours to spend on this. And if it's you know, that hour long session or a four hour seminar, then, you know, you go that one time, you spend a lot of time on it, and then maybe you don't do it again for another year, it may or may not be as effective as these kind of short bursts that you can, you can repeat. And so that's the, you know, the second part of it is that we can do it frequently. If we're talking about, you know, 10 minutes a week, 15 minutes a week, then we're able to repeat that over and over again. Um, and that's really kind of helping us cement these lessons in these kids' minds. And then we want to be engaging. So that's why we're using, you know, the the lens of sports and these ambassadors um, who have some influence is to meet the students where they are. You know, we can all say that we want them to spend less time on their phones and less time watching TikTok, et cetera, but they're probably going to do it anyway. So uh, rather than kind of shying away from it, we want to lean into the space that they're in um, and the way that they're communicating and bring the, these voices into that context for them. And then we want it to be experiential. So it's really important, um, obviously, to not only you know talk about these things, but then move it to action. And so I think you know what I saw <clears throat> was that we do you know a decent job when they're when we have little kids. You know when they're five, six years old, we we're very specific with small children, and we tell them don't hit anybody, and you need to share and say please and thank you. And we're specific with how they can put into action the things we're trying to teach them. And then at some point we decide that people just know how to be human beings and we just let them do what they want. And I think it's fairly clear that we're not very good at it. Um, and so I think we need to be more specific uh, with how we put these skills into action. And so each of our videos, um, and we'll see in a, in a moment what this looks like, comes with a set of discussion questions and then a set of um, action items. And so, you know, if you're in a group setting, you can watch the video, go over the discussion questions that they're reflecting immediately on that um, on that experience and what they learned, and then move to, okay, how am I going to put this into action, whether it's, you know, in my community, in my classroom, with my family, uh, or on their sports team, or any other kind of team environment that they're in. So making sure that, you know, we're really translating it. And so this is kind of the the basis of what we built with PATH is to make sure it's really easy for the teacher, really engaging for the students, and then has an action plan kind of going forward to make sure that we're practicing these skills in the same way we're practicing, you know, our, our math skills or 
um, our skills out on a court or a field. So we have, you know, talked to many kind of students, educators, university advisors that have given input on the design here. Uh, we think that the parameters kind of go from fourth or fifth grade up. Uh, it's maybe a little challenging for for kids under that age, um, but even up through you know college and and adults. You know, when I watch these videos, you know, I learn from them and um, and they're being used you know at times in companies and things, but also I think are you know very appropriate for sort of middle school and high school age kids. Um, and those, and they're currently being used in public and private schools um, and some of those collegiate programs. And I think that, you know, the kids are the target. That's who we want to be consuming, you know, the videos uh, and doing the exercises, but the coaches and the teachers are really the vessel, you know? So, um, you know, presumably that's what a lot of you are here today is those um, educators who are going to be getting the material to, to the kids. And so um, I think you're really the most effective, you know, people to not only introduce them to the content, but then, you know, help them go through some exercises of, okay, let's really think critically about what we've seen and how we might use that. So this is how it works. Um, you know, we start, like I said, with that two minute video, two, three, four minutes. Um, from one of our ambassadors, speaking kind of directly to to the kids, give them the discussion questions, uh, and that discussion can be five minutes long. It can be you know an advisory period length, uh, whatever it is, and then we teach them how to apply it or have them think about how they might apply that. Um, and this has been done in a lot of different settings. Like I said, a sports team is one of them, but it's also in advisory classes, English, history. Um, one of my favorites was uh, an English teacher at Punahou School in Hawaii who had kids listen to and watch a video that was about um, stereotypes. And she had them write poems about how other people look at them. Um, so there's all kinds of different applications that, that we can have for it. And then, like I said before, the most important thing is to be able to repeat, um, you know, with the next video or, you know, the next subject um, kind, of, kind of frequently so that people can see that. Um, and so a lot of this is is based on, you know, what we've heard from educators and coaches is that some of them don't know how to dive deeply into a lot of these topics, um, because, again, you don't necessarily have the training um, in these specific skills. But sometimes the most important thing is to just get little reminders frequently so we can check in on, on our behaviors. And, um, and I think most kids, most people want to be doing the right thing, want to be, you know, expressing themselves um, in these positive ways and using these life skills, but making sure we're checking in on how that's actually translating into our behavior, um, even with just, like I said, 10 minutes a week, um, kind of helps people keep keep on track and remembering sort of the keys to the skills that we're teaching. So I'm going to um, go ahead and go on Thrively, and we're going to watch one of the videos. Um, feel free to put Janetta, let me know if there's questions in the chat that we need to answer now, but otherwise we will take a look at that when we're done. So if you're on the Thrively platform, yeah, okay. um, you can see these are the some of the playlists that we have up there on things like confidence, um, dealing with adversity, very important skills for these kids to learn, uh, and team wake, teamwork and collaboration. And so I'm going to go into the teamwork and collaboration one. So what we have here is a, a full kind of teacher guide. So you can go on here and this is the full guide for the playlist. It'll give sort of the themes and objectives of each of the videos, each of the lessons, and then those, you know, discussions and, and action activities. Um, and so you can kind of go in, in and see, you know, the entire guide for the lesson. And then what it would look like is this. Here are the video. There's this kind of an intro video if you want to watch that. And then here's the, the content. So we are going to go ahead and watch a quick video um, with my friend Neka here. Okay. Just making sure that everybody can hear that. Let me know if we cannot. Okay. There is no volume. 
I can definitely use it. You don't, you can't hear it? Hear me, Cassidy? They're, they're... Now it's coming. Can somebody put the chat if they're able to hear? Yeah. It's frozen right now, but. Yeah. Can you, My example is being a Nigerian American. Can you hear yes. That? Okay. I can definitely use my example of being Nigerian American. With that, my experience is quite unique. Um, and I think it's a perfect example of understanding that I have, even outside of just my Black experience as a woman, I have a cultural experience as well. And so that can be a bit of a challenge sometimes. You know, there are Nigerians that feel that I'm not Nigerian enough, and there are Americans that might feel that I'm not American enough. And um, what I can say most about all of that is no one is any one thing. And it's important to realize that, especially as you evolve and as you figure out exactly where you fit in into this world and um, just how important what your contribution can be. You don't need to narrow it down to just one thing but you most certainly can use the things that make you you to celebrate yourself and um, for others to also learn more about your experience. And then with that too, uh, I think it's important for young individuals and young aspirers to understand that just like how you have a story, other people have a story as well. And in the same way, um, you want others to hear your story, you, you too have to listen. And I think the world that we live in now too is because certain voices were not heard, certain voices were muted. And the, the first way to really fix that is to understand that there are experiences outside of yours. And if you raise that voice who has the least space, then it causes everyone's situation to get better. When it comes to playing sports at a young age, it builds a character in people as, as citizens in society that nurtures that environment that we wish to see everywhere, which is teamwork. What contributes to how I play on the court has a lot to do with the aspect of teamwork. I love playing with people. I love making myself better so that other people can also be better. I love being great so other people can be great. And I think that's um that kind of ties into understanding that everybody has a role, everybody has a story. And once that is out there, once that space is made for each person to to kind of provide their story and contribute their part, then the team can work that much better. All right. So um, we're going to take a look at the lesson now. Then go ahead and put in the chat uh, something that resonated with you from that video, if you're listening to it. Um, and I think as you can see from that, you know, NECA is uh, an all-star WNBA player. Um, she, you know, she's won a championship. She is currently the president of their Players Association. You know, she's fantastic. You know, very little of it is specific to basketball. <clears throat> you know, she's talking about kind of a human experience and one that can be applied to teams regardless of what that team, you know, looks like. And so every one of your students, you know, needs to be able to collaborate to work together um, with other people, you know, if nowhere else than in your classroom. Um, and so then obviously, you know, within their communities, within their, within their families. And so you can see from, from kind of that video how, how we're able to kind of translate these lessons outside of sport. But if there's anything that resonated with you that you kind of heard in that video, go ahead and um, throw that in the chat. Um, great. Yeah, raising the voice of the least heard, everyone has a story, excellent. So this is what we would do after it. So each of the Thrively lessons looks like this. There's the video at the top. Um, and then we go into the discussion questions right after. And so this platform is kind of perfect for what we do because it allows the students to to post or you know, text or audio or video, whatever they need um, right here. 
And so, you know, the questions for this one would be, if no one is just one thing, what are the some of the things that make up your story? You know, asking your students to, you know, consider all of the different components that that make up, you know, who they are. So, you know, for someone like Neka, she might have always been looked at as a basketball player, but there are many different kind of components of who she is. And then what are the, some of the ways that you can better listen or help raise someone else's voice? So how are you looking kind of externally at what you're doing? Um, great, just looking at the chat really quick. People fit in more than one group and box. Yeah, you can't please everyone. Um, perfect. Oh yeah, and one point on the video itself. Yeah, she has a very calming voice and we do try to um, you know, elevate certain points with the, with the text on the screen. Um, so we go through the general, you know, the reflection questions. And then the second exercise is around um, what are we actually, or, you know, kind of trying to find the takeaways so that we're seeing those key messages like you all just did, um, and just reflecting on those. And then we have the ways to practice. And so, you know, in this case, we say, you know, pair up with somebody else in the class or on the team and share some of those things to make up your story and listen to theirs. Uh, you know, getting to see people as multidimensional human beings. Um, and then, you know, how this week are you going to find a way to listen or better understand someone and help raise their voice? And again, they have the opportunity to, to put that right here. Um, and so that could be, you know, they literally turn on the video and they have a conversation right there and, and record that and they're entering that in, in the platform. Um, or they're coming back, you know, a few days later and saying, this is, this is how I, you know, helped raise someone's voice today or using a picture or video. Um, so there's lots of different ways that we can share different artifacts of how we're, how we're learning these things. Um, okay, I'm gonna go back to here. I apologize, you lost me for a minute, but. You're good, you're back. put any questions you guys have in the chat and we'll definitely get to those at the end. Yeah, um, okay, so you know, the, the questions that I have, and you can feel free to put in the chat, you may be able to unmute if you want to, is just how might you or your colleagues use these? Um, and you're all, I'm sure you're all different, uh, you know, grades and different environments in your classroom or your teams, um, you know, different ways that you can think about putting these into practice uh, or different ideas for the student activities. Anybody, I can share some that we, you know, heard before, but if anybody has some that they want to throw out there it'll probably help the help the whole group and again you can I don't know I don't know if they're able to unmute or just use the chat but great yeah they're not able you can ask to unmute for sure um but I did put it in the chat if you'd like to go ahead and and add your pieces one of the things I was sharing with Cassidy um is you know after school programming for sure um question from carolyn is your mission statement on the path sports website and we might yes. want to add that to the chat i believe so yes thank you Path sports here i can i can copy it for me or this Great. in the chat um so one of my favorite things as you're thinking about kind of how you would use it one of my favorite um examples is uh, I guess I can stop sharing for now since you have it in the chat. Um, one of my favorite examples is if you, especially if you have, you know, a, a K through six school or a K-12 school and you have, you know, different levels of kids or even within your high school from your seniors to your freshmen, using the older kids to help teach the younger kids. You know, we all know that if you really want to learn something, the, the best way to do that is to try and teach it to somebody else. And so what you might do is watch, you know, this video with NECA with your, um, you know, juniors, juniors, and then they're taking that and teaching it to the freshmen or the eighth graders um, and teaching those same lessons. So that's, that's one of the ways that, you know, people have thrown out in the past, um, you know, how they can, how they can incorporate it. Yeah, in the chat, we have Jeffers uh, saying the kids do not know everything and this teaches a skill. What seems obvious could be an aha moment. Yeah, I think a lot of it is just, you know, translating it into something that they can bring back into their everyday life. Like, I think we tell people a lot of the time, like, be kind, which is great. We should all be kind. But what does that actually look like? You know, I don't think any of the kids grow, wake up in the morning and think I'm going to be unkind today, but they may or may not be registering kind of how that's coming out in their behavior. Like, nobody wants to be a bad teammate, but they may not know what that looks like. So 
I think what we, what these, you know, ambassadors can do is really speak authentically to what it looks like at a high level. Um, and they've obviously all had a lot of success in it. I wonder, Cassidy, if you could talk about something that's come up a lot in um, some of my conversations with school districts, which is feedback. And, and that's, you know, the goal setting and the feedback piece, I think, is a constant loop. Uh, both for adults and for students. Um, can you talk a little bit about how maybe some of these uh, videos might help with that and and or just in your own experience? Yeah, I mean, A, we have we have some specific videos on uh, on goals, like setting daily goals um, and kind of that sort of discipline. Um, Heinz Ward has a great one on that. But I think also, you know, going back to, to Thrively, I think it's a great place to do it because you can write out everything in there. And so... You can you can have you can do the exercise, watch the video, and then maybe if the next week you're doing a different video, instead you start with, you know, did we accomplish what we wanted to after the last one, and spend you know a couple minutes checking back on those last action items and saying, okay, did I do what I was said I was going to do? You know, did I actually accomplish this before we move on to the next one, um, where we're reinforcing it? But I think that's a good kind of loop to get into to to make sure you see it and then you're checking back in on it. Um, in a week or two weeks and making sure that it's been translated. That's great. Um, yeah, Jeffers put mm -hmm. something in there about um, behavioral goals for students. Uh, yeah, that's great. I think using them with, you know, small group sessions or individuals on some of the behavioral skills that they wanna, that they wanna work on, I think is gonna be super helpful. And to even extend that out, Jeffers, um, and for anybody who, is working with gifted and talented populations of students. They have, you know, yearly goals that they have to do, but we've been having discussions too about every student needs to know what a smart stretch, you know, whatever, just a general goal is. And in Thrively, what's really nice is you can go ahead and you can push out, for example, be kind. You know, if that's a goal that we want everyone to do, you can put an action plan in there. We can, you know, assign these playlists and then have them upload an, a highlight that shows evidence of being kind or you know something that they did the other day and this can go in their digital portfolio to continue to um, have them showcase and celebrate because I think part of the joy of sometimes sports and activities is that celebration of accomplishment and so even these you know shorter term goals and and what we might consider smaller goals of hey I was kind to an eighth grader yesterday great you know let's celebrate that um, I think can really put the kids on the path and again no pun intended but on that path towards you know I'm looking at a goal that I have whether it be you know to academic or otherwise so uh, Wesley says is there a printable transcript of each video for students to be able to review and discuss with each other yeah we don't currently have uh, printed transcripts I mean we have captioning on the videos um because they're you know from from YouTube uh and then another what we do have is I think on some of those Thrively pages or on the teacher guide, some of the kind of key points um, in the video. So you could distribute those at least um, so that they have those in front of them um, or obviously have them, you know, as soon as they finish watching, like we did, jot down what some of those are. Yeah, and Louise says uh, same thing on yeah. the same boat. Well, I just want to kind of close out. Let me come off, um, I, I've been told I bobble my head too much and now I'm sitting in the sun, so I look like, but, um, I just wanted to kind of throw out to all of you who are on this, um, you know, we're so lucky to be in partnership with PATH and, and Cassidy brings so much to the table in terms of filling, uh, you know, just bringing her experience, but also, you know, like she said, our athletes and, and many people who are in, you know, that limelight students do listen to and, and they start to say, I want to be like them and not just in a sports capacity. Um, but yeah, you took it out of my brain here. Cassidy is always available. Um, she runs an organization, Path Sports, that's doing some amazing things working with schools. So feel free to reach out directly to Cassidy. Of course, you can always reach out to us at thrively.com. Um, we have lots of different ways. You can go to thrive at thrively.com and reach out for support. We're happy to give you ideas. We have so many resources inside of Thrively. And I think the goal setting piece has really started to take off quite a bit with school districts. So whether you're looking at a district or school or even a classroom level, think about those goals you want to put in front of students and how you're going to measure them, how you're going to keep kind of coming back to these playlists to say, are we, are we working on it? What strategies can we use? 
and um, and taking that time to really celebrate with the students who are doing it because that is uh, those are your leaders. Those are your next you know, group of people that are going to show up on these videos too. And the other thought, I don't know, Cassidy, you work with schools across the country. Has anybody ever made their own videos like kids? Cause it doesn't necessarily just have to be our, our national athletes, right? Have you seen that for happen? Sure, for sure. It has been, you know, one of the first th things some kids think of is like, this is amazing. Now I want to go interview, you know, my grandma or somebody at the school or somebody in my community. So that would be a really cool thing. And if, if you're, any of your students do that, like, please let us know. We're happy to feature those um, also on our site or on our, on our social media. Um, but I think that's the great, the great thing. And, you know, obviously they can put that video right on Fively. So, you know, you, you can see it too. Um, but yes, that, that, that's even better if they're kind of creating their own. I think we might've just come up with an idea. Let's do a little, uh, let's do a little marketing campaign, right? So yeah. you guys get out there, get your kids talking about teamwork and collaboration and how that helps them or, you know, dealing with adversity. But we, again, thank you so much for being here. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to throw them in the chat. Uh, Madhavi also added um, a Google uh, form. So if you want to give us feedback, let us know um, what, what was helpful. If you want us to reach out to you to help uh, connect with your administration, happy to do that and have offline conversations with all of you. But in the meantime, go watch those videos. I know I get empowered when uh, when I watch them. So thank you so much for all you do for kids. And Cassidy, thank you for all that you're doing in sports and otherwise, and for being a great partner. So yeah, thank you. Thanks everyone for coming. Yep. Have a great afternoon, everybody. Bye.